Okay, the different parts of a hat. The crown, the brim. This is the crown. The brim is the part that you tip to people, you know, tip, tip your hat, you know, all the fedora uh, uh, colloquialisms. Now, what is a fedora? Fedora is a new term. Uh, back in the old days, a fedora meant like a dress hat like this with a big brim, like a big, bold, kind of you know, brimmy fedora, oversized brim. Nowadays, a fedora is, it's like a dress hat, you know, these kind of things. It's got a flip up, snap brim, goes up or down, generally a, a ribbon here pinch front, crease, you know what they are, the old hats from the movies, gentleman's hat, you know, whatever, fedora. Uh, British people call them a trilby. Uh, what's a trilby? It's got actually many different terms. Uh, if you go to England, they call all of these hats trilbies. They say, hey, have you got a trilby? And I know what he's talking about. He's talking about, like, you know, there's an actual hat shape called a trilby, and then there's what the British people call a trilby. It's generally just a short brim fedora. I got a trilby on my head. If I showed him this, oh, no, no, look for a trilby, you know? The, the trilby is like a short brim fedora trilby thing. We generally call them all fedoras here. We call them short brim fedora, big brim fedoras. Trilby is a British thing. Now, there's another hat called a trilby that kind of has a short brim thing that where the front stays down, it doesn't snap. The front stays down, the back stays up, and it's a very low crown. And it has a kind of a A-shaped crown like this. Like There's a special short brim kind of a thing called a trilby, and I've seen very beautiful vintage trilbies. They look different from fedoras. It's, it's, hard to, it's almost a Robin Hood type of hat, where the back is scooped up like this, and it blends to like a down in the front but they don't really snap. I think you've seen brims like this. They're kind of Robin Hoodie, short brims. Very like all over the street now. It's Trilby look. Um, okay, Trilby versus Fedora. <clears throat> Let's talk about the different parts of them. You know, the crown, the brim, and all that. Now, this band. What's the band for? The band is the only part that makes contact with your body, right here, all around the hat. This part here is not touching my head. This part is not touching my head. This no 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 here. It's touching only here. Do you notice that? The part that makes contact with me has a dark, wide colored band. It's not just for fashion. Actually, it's not for fashion at all, really. It's, it's there for a purpose. The idea is that if you have this hat for years and years, you can actually sweat through the whole thing. It perspire, sorry. Should, Fifth Avenue guys should say perspire. Um, so if you sweat through the, uh, the leather, it goes through the felt, eventually you're gonna get like these kind of salt stains here, or maybe just discoloration. The idea, the purpose of this band is that the hat gets old, you sweat into here. When you see the salt and stuff, you cut the band off and you change it for like 10 bucks, maybe 30 bucks, 35 for a custom band, something really good and handmade, you know? It's a cheap modification, it's like buying uh, shoelaces for your shoes. You buy a new band and the hat lives on. Now the idea is you gotta change it. If this is all salty and sweaty and you do nothing, it spreads, it goes beyond here and you get stains here and here. The biggest thing is a ring of sweat around here. Everybody comes in and says, Kev, can you clean it? No, you cannot. Uh, it sweats all the way through the hat. I can't really buff out anything that goes all the way through. I just keep buffing and buffing and the sweat's there all the way. So if there's a stain from the top, like a bird or whatever, grape juice, I can actually grind that out, buff it out, and just kind of sand it with very, very fine buffers, get rid of the stain. But if you sweat through it, there's no way to get rid of it. So what do you do? You change the band before it's too late. Prevention is the only thing to do. Uh, there's a product called the Sweat Wick, we call them. Charge $5 for it, and it's a little pad you put here. It's a black pad, so it's invisible, and it's like a cotton pillow. It goes against your forehead here, it touches you, and the idea is you sweat into the pillow, and the perspiration never touches the hat. Now, those are great. Um, I, I don't say put them on at the very beginning, put them on at every hat, because there are downsides to it, too. Um, a leather sweatband on the inside is there to block perspiration, obviously. Um, it also kind of sticks against your skin, it keeps the hat on in the wind and stuff. But leather sweatbands, you could wipe it down with a cloth, a hanky, keep it dry, keep it sanitary and clean. Now, if you put that cotton pad thing in, I told you about the sweat wick, 
to take it off. You eat lunch in a nice cool cafe. When you put your hat back on, it's still wet. You know, you can't dry it with a hanky, it's wet. So you're putting on this like, you know, dirty sweat. It's like not that comfortable. So I try to use those sweat wicks at the end of the, the hat's life, not at the beginning, because it's nicer to have leather against your, your skin. It's clean, you know. Now the other alternative is don't put a sweat wick in there. That's like a band-aid kind of thing. It's a temporary fix. Change the leather. If this leather gets really funky, it's just gross or something wrong with it, you can change it. We change it, it's not that expensive. But you know, it's a big job and you know, the whole hat has to be taken apart, redone, reshaped, rounded out. It's a big job. So it's like, you know, maybe 40 bucks, 40, 45 for a really good leather, the choice of colors, like the highest quality. You could change that. Changing this is between like $10 and $35. Um, you don't do this often. It could be once, I mean, I never do it. I do it maybe once every 20 years, and you know, and hat gets really, really, really old, but I, I never do it. I put those sweat pads in for five bucks. It's, I don't know, it's easier, quicker. I don't really have the time to have all my hats rebanded because they're very busy with customers' hats, you know? Okay, so, so getting back to parts of the hat, we talked about the crown, the brim, the, the bands is there to capture whatever, perspiration, keep your hat from getting messed up, sweaty. Same thing with the sweat band on the inside, that's there, prevent perspiration and stuff. Um, what else? Uh, different parts of the, okay, you've got something on your hat called a, a wind cord. Now, not everybody has these. is this little, sorry guys, I'm just playing. It's an elastic cord that's right here underneath the band. Okay, you take this, it sits under the band. You see it there? There it is, okay. You've seen hats with this, it has a button right there. It's called a wind cord. Generally, you just ignore it, and it's this elastic that stays under the band, untouched, ignored. Now, to use it is really cool. This is the idea, when it's windy out, you take this, you grab it, and you take it off the crown of the hat, and it's a slip knot effect, you see that? Kind of that new C kind of a knot, a slip knot. Okay, you put it on your finger, and make that slip knot really small, just like a ring. Let go. Okay, hat is on your head, you're wearing your hat home. The idea of this is, you put this through that little buttonhole on your lapel, you know, your overcoats, your jackets, your suits have a little buttonhole here, the one that you put carnations through. Now, it's not for carnations. What is it for? Your wind cord. This little button thing is, I guess, outdated, antiquated, a defunct. Nobody knows what they are anymore, but everybody had them, and everybody had these little buttonholes over here. The idea is you're walking home with your briefcase, and your umbrella, and it's really stormy and windy, and uh, oh, my hat's about to blow off. Take your wind cord off, you put that button through that lapel buttonhole. It's a little bungee, it's a safety cord. Now, yeah, it looks silly, a button, you know, you're walking through a storm, and there's this like string hanging down, but you know what, it looks 10 times sillier running down the street, oh, my hat, chasing your hat, you know, down the street and stuff, and your umbrella and your briefcase and falling, and, so yeah, wind cord is probably better than chasing your hat. Okay, how do you use these things? All right, when you're finished, you got your ring, you know, we, we made a little ring, you have to find your slip knot again, you know, like this. It's basically just like a loop inside a loop. So this little loop, you never touch it. It just, you never touch that. It may go all the way to the end, you know, and it's hard to find. Then you just open it again. Okay, you make that hole as big as the hat's crown. All right, and then you just lasso the crown. 
and just put it around the top. It's really easy. Okay, once you get it on there, just put it underneath the band that goes all the way to the bottom where the crown and the brim touch each other. Okay, it's below the band now. There. Let's get it down. Once you get it there, one way, pulling it one way will tighten it, pulling it another way will give it more slack. So there's more slack, there's tightening. You can see it's tight now. So you make sure it's underneath the ribbon there, you tuck it down under. And the button part should be somewhere near the bow. Okay, here's the button. It's in back of the bow, it's in front of, it's in there. It's nice and tight. Whop. All right, so that's what a wind cord is for. Most hats don't have wind cords, but if you want to put one on, you could come to JJ Hat Center and for $10, we'll put a wind cord on your hat and you got this cool thing, you know. All right, um, they're not that strong. Usually there's like one stitch or something. So if you really want to use this wind cord, you know, like functionally, where it uh, meets the hat, there's like a, an elastic that's attached to the hat. Where it meets the hat and it's stitched with one little stitch, reinforce it. Have somebody put two, three, four, five stitches on it. And make it nice and tight. So if this hat bounces on that cord, boing, 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 it's not going to just fall off, you know. Um, most of these wind cords are on there for show. It's not really that strong. You know, they just put a choop, choop, stitch and that's the end they cut it. So if you really want to use this baby and like have it, you know, dangling in a, in a storm or whatever, reinforce it. And if you get a $10 wind cord put on your hat, tell the guy, can you stitch it nice and tight? I really intend to use it. You know, put some good stitches in there. And he won't be offended. I think they'll understand. At least we will. Um, 10 bucks, yeah, the work is free. We just stick the wind cord. Usually they're black. Sometimes we have black or brown though. Okay, we got the outer band, the inner band, the wind cord, the crown, and the brim. Anything else? Uh, the edge of the brim, this is a raw edge. Raw edge is when you just cut it with like a scissor, it looks like. They use something like a compass with a blade on the end. They make a circle going, and they just trim it with a razor. That's a, uh, a raw edge. Raw edges are going to be the most prone to getting wavy unless it's crazy super thick or really good quality. Something like a silk finish, velour finish, a nice good good quality hat. Um, raw edges are tough. I'm going to say shorter brims stay nicer than bigger brims. They're just a little bit harder to keep straight. Um, but if you're doing crazy crazy quality it doesn't matter you know usually remember there are expensive hats that stink and there are cheap hats that are really good um, so you gotta be careful there are both kinds of hats good and bad in both categories and it's true you know it's very very true you have to just sort of look at the hat make sure the hat is good felt it's thick felt if you're seeing problems like a new hat is not snapping or a used hat or whatever that's a big problem already that's how it should get when it's, you know, finished. So this hat snaps up and down in the front and the back. Now things like ribbon wrinkles, you see those wrinkles? You could get that out by wetting this band. Just wet it and it tightens like a drum. So that's a great trick. If you have wrinkles in your band, 100% uh, of the time it comes from stacking your hats. When you put one hat on top of the other, the top hat mashes the bottom hat's ribbon. It's obvious, you can see it, okay? Don't stack your hats, just don't do it you have to do it, get a plastic saran wrap kind of cover or a ring around the band, a foam ring, and we have both of them. You drop by JJ's, we'll give you those for free. Uh, you need to separate the hats. I say don't stack them. Though. If you got to stack them, stack them upside down super loosely and try to put something between them, like a piece of saran wrap or something. I don't know. Anything. Um, what was I getting at? Wind cords, bands. Bow, the bow. A lot of people see the bow, they think it's something effeminate. Um, it's not. It's part of this style. Now, what is it? It's basically, this ribbon is covering up all the raw parts of the hat. There's stitches under here. See, it's like raw under there. You don't want to show. So, that's what the band is. It's also gathering your sweat when you sweat through a hat. Um, and if you change the ribbon, there's sweat under there. So, it's always raw underneath there. You want to cover it. It's rough. Um, a, you should always have a band on your hat, I think, some kind of band. Uh, let, me take, let me see, okay. 
The way these bands are made, it's basically a piece of ribbon. Okay, let's say it's like a one foot piece. It goes around and there's kind of like two ends that meet. Now, when those two ends meet, it's like a seam. They have to cover that seam. And that is right here. So this little piece here with this gold thing, it's just a piece of cloth that covers the seam. There's a ribbon wrapped around it. Here's the two ends. Instead of tying it or sewing it, what they do is they tack them down with some stitches and they cover the seam to make it look neat. Okay. After they cover it, they put like a couple little pleats here and they make, you know, like a ball. And they just make it look more decorative. It looks more finished and it looks more expensive. That's what the bow is. It's basically just covering that little seam. You know, if you hate the bow, you could change it. You could get this off. We could change it for you, but eh. I say accept the bow, embrace the bow. It's not effeminate and, hey, it would, you know, I could handle being a little effeminate. I wear pink hats and you know, like lavender hats and stuff. I have no problem with my, my masculinity. So, um, yeah, bows on hats are cool. Now, if you think it's not cool, you so many ways you could get rid of it. You could have no bow and just have that seam covered by that little cross strip. That would be a custom band, you know. It might cost you 30, 35 bucks. Um, there are $10 bands that you could clip on that just kind of cross over each other. They don't have a bow. They're called pug bands. Pug bands is 10 bucks. They're available in every color, silk, uh, cotton, polka dots, paisleys, stripes, solids, uh, florals. You could get a really cool band for 10 bucks. It's not going to look as good as these bands. Custom made bands, which is made from a piece of ribbon, handmade by a person. You know, each thing is cut and everything. Pug band is a ready-made band that you clip on for 10 bucks and stuff. A uh, band like this generally doesn't come ready-made, but if you need to get it done, yes, it's more expensive, like, you know, 30, 35 bucks sometimes, but you get to choose anything. You can have two-tone, really wide, really thin, bow in the back is really cool. It's called the back bow. It's like a vintage thing. Um, any other parts of the hat that I left out? Oh, yeah. Okay, in the back. You know how you have the back of the hat? In the back, there's always that little bow. You see that? It's on the inside. It's in the seam in the back behind your head. It's a little, like a bow tie. I heard somebody call it a, a bow tie. I think it was Alu Snack Bar, was it you? Okay, what that is, that shows you where the back of the hat is. The idea is, okay, you're in a crowded movie theater, let's say, and you're everybody's walking out, you know, or you're in that single file leaving, you know, in the dark theater, and everybody's leaving. You want to know where the back of your hat is without looking at it. So you feel like this. You feel that little thing in the inside. And then there's the back. Okay. So that's what it is. That shows you the back of the hat. Um, that's it. You can take it off. I've had situations where I've worn out a hat so much in the front that, like, I've had scars in the front or dirt in the front of a hat, where I've taken the hat, taken the pinches out, re steamed it, reversed it, made this the front of the hat. And I didn't want that little bow tie thing in my forehead, so I just cut it off with a razor blade. So I get rid of it. And you can reverse a hat if you have something in the front that's just looking horrible or something. Just turn it around, pinch the other side, unpinch that, you know, use some steam. Get those pinches out, put new pinches on the other side, cut out the bow and reverse it. I did that once. My lavender hat is, um, is backwards. If you look at that video with my personal hat collection, uh, when I get to the lavender hat, I think I did it really quickly because I was embarrassed about that. And it was like a big, you know, I used so much that lavender hat that I buffed it out like almost down to the bone. And you can see some kind of weird gray brown stuff because it's like almost threadbare, like worn all the way through. So I took it, I turned it around, pinched this side, got rid of that little bow tie thing inside, and um, just reversed the hat. Now I wear it this way and it's clean, more clean, and the scar is in the back, which nobody really notices as much, I guess, you know. That's a weird makeshift man thing. I kind of, I don't think I invented that technique, but it's just like a weird thing that you can do if your hat is, you know, screwed up in the front. You could reverse it. Hey! Right, it's almost time to go to work. Okay, I gotta turn this off and go to work, guys. So, good talking to you. Ah!